Welcome back, Mitochondria Access, Dr. Peebler, for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we're going to go back and talk more about the mitochondrial super complex and its critical importance for efficient energy production and the minimization of excess reactive oxygen species, ROS, oxidative stress, which is going to help keep our mitochondria, mitochondrial DNA, and the cell as a whole protected from excess damage. As with most engines, there is some degree of exhaust. And I think we can look at ROS, RNS as exhaust. What's pretty cool is that ROS and RNS also have signaling properties. It used to be thought of when the initial oxidative stress, antioxidant theory of aging came out that we should just give people and we should be taking large amounts of antioxidants as a way to prevent and delay aging. And like with most theories, there is some truth to that. We don't want excess ROS, RNS, oxidative stress. That definitely will lead to disease. However, we also can't just clamp down completely on ROS and RNS. They are now known not to be all bad. They are critical for signaling and intracellular messaging that helps the cell know what to do and act as that environmental sensor. The mitochondrial super complex, as we talked about last time, is a critical and important and also exciting discovery within mitochondrial biology. And the last time we talked, we talked mostly about what its general roles were and what it looks like structurally and how it differs from most biological and biochemical textbooks and most of our ideas of what the inner mitochondrial membrane and the electron transport chain looks like. It really does take us a leap forward into quantum mechanics and quantum biology because it utilizes electron tunneling to overcome energy barriers that would be there otherwise when looking at it from a classical perspective. So today I want to dive in to the mitochondrial super complex and some of the very important factors that lead to its ability to form. And some of these factors also will lead to its inhibition to form when those structural components are in disarray. So let's get into it. We touched on in the last video talking about the mitochondrial super complex and its role to increase energy efficiency, electron transfer efficiency, electron tunneling due to the respiratory proteins being very close together. And because of that efficiency, we're going to have less oxidative stress or excess ROS production. So you can see here in this diagram, when the complex is assembled, you're always going to have some degree of ROS, but when it's disassembled, you're going to have a great deal more and you're going to have an inefficiency of electron transfer. And when that happens, that's going to snowball into more ROS production. And what it's saying here is that the integrity and stability of complex one is lost. We're going to talk about in the coming slides about how important complex one is for the formation of the mitochondrial supercomplex. And what it's saying here is mitochondrial respiratory supercomplexes from structure to function. The supercomplexes not only have respiratory functions, but also improve the efficiency of electron transfer and reduce production of reactive oxygen species. Impaired assembly of supercomplexes is closely related to various diseases, especially neurodegeneration. Now, why would that be? And you're gonna see this as a theme. When these are not formed, and there is an inefficiency of electron transfer and an excess of ROS, we're going to see that it's going to affect the brain and the heart most. Why is that? Well, because those are the energy hogs. Those are the parts of the body that are most affected and rely the most on efficient and effective mitochondria because they use the most energy in the entire body, which makes sense. If you have inefficiencies and you have damage, you're going to see cardiovascular and nerve generation as a primary clinical outcome. Under some normal physiologic state, we may have a proportion of super complex formation and non super complex formation. But when there is some degree of stress or energy demand on the system, the body is going to form these mitochondrial super complexes so we can have increased energy production while mitigating any excess damage from the exhaust or the ROS. That is going to require a whole host of proteins, as we'll see here, that surround the electron transport chain to maintain the super complex formation. One of those is OPA1, SCAF1, and 
various others that are not shown in this diagram. And what you see here is when you're under that stress state, when you're going to have less reactive oxygen species and increased energy generation, as we've talked about. As it says here, in biologic systems, chemical activity takes place in micrometer and nanometer size compartments that constantly change in shape and volume. These things are not static. These are things that are dynamic. We've talked about that during the mitochondrial dynamics series where there's fusion and fission and mitophagy and biogenesis and this whole mitochondrial life cycle. They're not stagnant. And so just like the mitochondria as a whole and as a network are not stagnant, the mitochondria itself is not stagnant. And there's always shape and volume changes going on. And those shape and volume changes are incredibly important. So these ever-changing cellular compartments embed chemical reactions, and we demonstrate that the rates of such incorporated reactions are directly affected by the ongoing shape changes. So structure and function are intimately involved in biology. And this is very important in particular for mitochondrial shape and, as we'll see, crystal formation. Mitochondrial cristae, where beauty meets functionality. Recent discoveries have unveiled the relationship between mitochondrial cristae shape and oxidative phosphorylation, oxfos function, suggesting the membrane morphology modulates the organization and function of the oxfos system with a direct impact on cellular metabolism. So what we're going to see here is that the mitochondrial cristae, the actual folding of the membranes, is probably the most important factor for the mitochondrial supercomplexes to form. And that crista is formed through a variety of elaborate protein-protein interactions. And before I read this, I'm just gonna switch, I'm gonna go a little bit further ahead. This is called the MECOS, and it stands for the Mitochondrial Contact Site and Crista Organization System, or MECOS. And that's what this entire group of proteins make up. And it's going to be a combination of OPA1, the mitochondrial supercomplex themselves, and various other scaffolding proteins that help allow this to form into this beautiful folded structure. You're also gonna see cardiolipin being incredibly important. We're gonna talk about that shortly. So let's go back here. Mitochondrial crystal shape determines respiratory supercomplex assembly and respiratory efficiency. Respiratory chain complexes assemble into functional quaternary structures called supercomplexes within the folds of the inner mitochondrial membrane or crista. Here, we investigate the relationship between respiratory function and mitochondrial ultrastructure and provide evidence that crista shape determines the assembly and stability of respiratory chain supercomplexes and hence mitochondrial respiratory efficiency. And I'm going to go through a series of papers that are going to paint and solidify these points. So efficiency of mitochondrial respiration, mitochondrial quality control, apoptosis, and inheritance of mitochondrial DNA depend on proper architecture of the mitochondrial membranes and dynamic remodeling of the inner mitochondrial cristae. So this adds to this. We've now talked about how the inner mitochondrial membrane and the crista formation are important for energy production. That we've hit already. But in this paper, it's saying that it's also important for mitochondrial quality control, fission fusion, mitophagy. It's also important for apoptosis, programmed cell death, and the proper inheritance of mitochondrial DNA. Maintaining mitochondrial heteroplasmy is also affected by this crista formation. The MECOS, or the Mitochondrial Contact Site and Crista Organization System, again, is a multiple protein complex. And it is, in general, when we get into the detail and the nitty-gritty of different proteins, is, I believe, above and beyond the scope of these types of videos. What I want to hammer home here is that the mitochondrial cristae are incredibly important for mitochondrial supercomplex formation and therefore mitochondrial function as a whole, including energy production. And when we get into certain interventions further on, which improve mitochondrial function, you'll see this theme time and time again that this particular intervention A or intervention B is going to improve mitochondrial crystal formation. So that's another way of saying, without saying, that it improves supercomplex formation, it decreases re excess reactive oxygen species, it improves efficient mitochondrial output of energy. It's going to be the code words, as you say, within the medical literature that this particular intervention does these things. That's why I want to hammer this home that the mitochondrial crista formation are so darn important for overall mitochondrial health and your and my health as a whole. Furthermore, defects in mitochondrial architecture can result in severe human diseases affecting predominantly the nervous system and the heart. So this just goes back and confirms what we talked about. The most mitochondrial density is in our heart and our brains. And therefore, of course, when this system is not working, the things they're going to feel it the most and first are going to be the things that require energy the most, which is the heart and brain. Makes sense. This is just another look at the folded crista versus a perturbed crista, you're going to see that the mitochondrial supercomplexes and the dimerization or the 
connection between two different ATP ACEs and the green here at the bottom is lined up and it's going to allow for efficient mitochondrial electron transfer and energy production. And when you have a perturbed crista or a disorganized crista, that's going to lead to dissolving of the mitochondrial super complex and it's going to damage the mitochondria's ability to perform adequately. And it says here, upon perturbation of crista formation, super complex and dimers of ATP synthase disassemble and complex C is mobilized, which can be dangerous in itself because when complex C, if it's mobilized to the point where it leaves the mitochondria itself, that can be a programmed cell death signal, an apoptosis signal. As a result, the electron transport chain is less efficient and thus the mitochondrial respiratory performance decreases, as we've talked about. I just wanted to show this because this is another paper showing that aberrant crista structures are associated with different disorders such as diabetes, neurodegeneration, cancer, and interestingly enough, hepatic encephalopathy, which is where you have a buildup of a chemical called ammonia. And that is because the liver is dysfunctional. This is generally seen in cirrhosis. And that cirrhosis can be caused by a variety of things. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease caused by metabolic syndrome is now the main cause of cirrhosis, at least in the Western world. It used to be hepatitis C. I think when most of us think about cirrhosis, we think about alcohol, but believe it or not, diabetes metabolic syndrome is actually the main cause of cirrhosis nowadays. And when you have cirrhosis and your liver is dysfunctional and it's not able to process ammonia, you end up with elevated ammonia levels, which can cause encephalopathy or confusion or alterations in consciousness. We see this all the time in the hospital and we have to deal with it using certain medications. So this is a paper called Mitochondrial Contact Site and Crista Organization System, a central player in membrane shaping and crosstalk and saying that the mucose deficient when there's a breakdown in the mucos or the crista structure proteins that allow the crista to actually form, that leads to grossly altered intermembrane architecture, resulting in far-reaching functional perturbations in mitochondria. Consequently, mutations affecting the function of mucos are responsible for a diverse spectrum of human diseases. And this interestingly is saying that recent evidence indicates that mitochondrial morphology is crucial for cell physiology as a whole, as changes in mitochondrial shape have been linked to neurodegeneration. Again, calcium signaling, we're going to talk about calcium signaling in the future, about how important calcium signaling is for mitochondrial shape and crystal formation and cell lifespan and cell death. What I wanted to show with this paper is that the functions of the mucos in mitochondrial membrane architecture and biogenesis are influenced by numerous interaction partners. That is what I've been saying over and over again. You have these various protein complexes. There's many, many proteins that make up this mucos system, as well as the phospholipid environment. And we're going to talk about that at length. The last thing I want to mention during this particular video, crystal formation and mitochondrial morphology and structure are critically important for mitochondrial mitochondrial function as a whole. That could include mitochondrial energy transfer of electrons, ATP production, limitations of excess reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress, as well as making sure there is efficient mitochondrial fission infusion and when necessary, apoptosis or programmed cell death to protect the entire system as a whole. We're going to talk about in the next video, some of the major factors in maintaining mitochondrial super complex formation. So please stay with us on this journey. We are getting into some less well-known factors when it comes to mitochondrial health and mitochondrial function that are going to have important clinical ramifications and outcome ramifications once we understand the importance of these things and we understand how different interventions affect these particular processes, then we can understand why they're so important for maintaining our health and also what are the top recommendations or the most important recommendations because now we know what are the most important factors improving mitochondrial structure and function. If you like the video, please like it. If you have folks in your life who are dealing with diseases of modern times and aging, please share this information with them. And if you're not part of the mitochondriac army, please consider subscribing so you can get more videos like this and you can increase your understanding about how to prevent and reverse disease in the future. Until next time.